Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're headed back underwater. We're taking a look at spawning fish. We're looking at their behavior, some of the baits that you can use to target them, and some of the tricks that we use to consistently catch fish. Fishing around the spawn is an awesome time to be on the water. Some people love to sight fish. They love to go out and intentionally target spawning bass. Other people want nothing to do with it. But the reality is if you're fishing during the month of April, you're fishing around spawning fish in almost the entire country. So even if you're not directly targeting them, you are fishing for and catching spawning fish. So today I want to cover some key tips. Again, we are headed underwater. Uh, we have a video coming. Tim is going to do an in-depth video for you about sight fishing, about targeting spawners, and how to do that properly. But today I wanted to give you a little jump start because, again, the spawn is on. In almost the entire country, there are fish moved up or moving up on beds. In the south, there are a lot of fish already done. In the north, it's just a little ways out. But for most guys, it's happening now. So I wanted to give you a little jump. Plus, everybody has a little different approach. I'm sure when Tim goes all in depth, his approach will be a little different than mine. But I wanted to give you just some quick key tips that I use. I grabbed five kinds of baits and I'm gonna walk you one through the baits, two through the tricks that I use, and then I also wanna talk a little bit about color because the first thing you're going to notice in all of these is that I use all natural colors. It's very rare that you'll see me throwing a white or a chartreuse, even if I'm actively bed fishing, actively sight fishing, I have a lot of faith in these really natural colors and profiles. Now, I wanna get underwater right away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at five styles of bait that work really well during the spawn, whether targeting fish that are on beds or just fishing, uh, but you will still be catching some of those spawning fish. The first one is a bluegill profiled swim bait. This one right here, this is the Savage Gear RTF Bluegill. It's the four incher. One of my absolute favorite bluegill swim baits. It's an amazing little bait. This guy will catch fish in virtually every situation in the spring. You can just bomb it on flats and just wind that thing. Uh, you can fish it right in and around cover, but you can also actively bed fish with the bait. It's a great bait for pitching in on those beds. Bass in the spring hate bluegill. They don't want them anywhere near their spawning grounds. Uh, so they will fire up on a bluegill swim bait harder than just about any other bait there is. Uh, they just don't want them anywhere around and they will smash them. One tip on bluegill profiles is that I stay with the smaller swim baits. Now again, whether you are actively sight fishing or you are just out bass fishing, one of the ways that you'll know fish have begun to spawn is that you'll get short strikes. I can think of a time last year I was throwing a little bluegill profiled swim bait and I was skipping up under laid down trees, right? Not sight fishing at all, just fishing. I'd throw it under the tree, I'd be winding it out and donk, I'd get bit or bump, bump, bump bump as I'm reeling, right? Hitting it, but not eating it. And it took me a little while to realize it was like the sixth or seventh time that I had thrown under a tree and got whacked, but not hooked up. That hey, these were spawning fish just trying to chase the bait out of the area. And in that situation, if you want to catch those fish, you either have to switch profile, switch to a different bait, uh, or you need to slow down and fish the bait methodically where they're actually going to eat it rather than just chase it and bump it. Now, the other bluegill bait that I really like to throw is this guy here, the mat lures. I personally like the hammer tail. They've got some different style tails, 
I love that hammer tail. Uh, really like the overall profile. Again, it's not giant. So it's a profile that they can commit to and fully eat. But if we're talking about one, two, three pounders, you're a lot better off with a smaller profile. But if you're targeting true giants, that profile is no problem. They can absolutely inhale that entire bait and have for me many, many times. Next one up, let's talk jigs. Actually, you know what, we're gonna save jigs. I wanna come back to jigs. Let's talk creature baits. Another one of my favorite baits to throw during the spawn is a creature, typically on a Texas rig. Uh, when I am choosing a creature bait, hands down, my number one bait is a Reaction Innovations Beaver. That's the main bait that you'll see me throw. Uh, I like to fish it, again, on a Texas rig with a 4 aught Superline hook. Uh, and in the video description with all these baits, uh, I will link, if there's rigging components like that, specifically a 4 aught Superline, I'll link the exact hook with the bait for you. Uh, but the benefit of a beaver style bait is that there's not a lot of extra, right? The hook is going to come all the way to here, so that's all hook. If I'm fishing, you know, an 8 or 10 or 12 inch worm, and the fish really doesn't want to eat it, they just want it out of their space, they're much more likely to grab the back of a longer worm or a full-size creature bait and pull that thing out of there without getting the hook. So I'm intentionally throwing this profile because they're more likely to eat the entire bait at once and actually get hooked. Another great option, this is the Pack of Slim. You guys know that's one of my favorite, favorite creature baits to throw. The four inch pack of slim. Again, once you've got a four aught super line in there, there's not a lot of bait left for them to be grabbing at. Odds are they're going to get the hook. Big difference between these profiles. This one is going to kick and have movement. This one, dead action. It's just profile, no swim, no kick. So sometimes they want one, sometimes they want the other. Both are fantastic baits. Uh, they fish extremely well and the fish mow them down. All right, let's talk about that jig. The jig is a good option. I love to fish a jig during the spawn and this brings us to an interesting point. Uh, you'll notice on my swim baits, both of those had a jig hook, an exposed jig hook. That's key for me. Now my Texas rigs do not, uh, but there are a lot of times where I need that weedless bait, right? I need a bait that I can pitch into cover, maybe around grass or a laid down tree. A lot of fish like to spawn right up against cover. So say I'm fishing a stump field, I wanna throw right to every stump. If I do that with an exposed hook, I'm gonna have problems. So there's a time and a place for that Texas rig, but there's also a time and a place for a jig. The benefit of a jig is that that hook is out and exposed. Now, if I could only have one jig, hands down, half ounce pitching jig, the go-to color. I love to put a beaver on that bait. Uh, and typically it's going to have some kind of blue in it. You notice that with the creature baits right off the bat. Like that's, that's tilapia, right? I always want some blue in my soft plastics during the spawn, always. Personal confidence. Uh, but again, if I could only have one, it's going to be that pitch and jig, Arky style head. It will do everything. It's got a stout hook. If I get around a giant, you know, I could throw this on a 20 pound line. If I get around a giant, I can put it to them. Uh, but I can also set that hook with say 14 pound line. So it's not like I need super, super stout gear. Say my water's clearing, I can go to lighter line. But that overall profile, is just magic. Uh, if I'm going to switch, typically where you're gonna see me switch is in clearer water. In clearer water, you'll see me go to some kind of a finesse jig or a micro jig. Totally downsize my profile. And again, when you downsize, those fish will come in and just 
inhale that thing. But sometimes when they're spawning, that bigger profile will get a bigger bite. Those fish will just ignore a little bait. You put a big bait in there, they crush it. The opposite can also be true. So don't be afraid to try both all the time. Um, but again, going back to that jig, the benefit is that exposed hook. See how little pressure it takes for me to get that hook point. One thing you don't want to do is be swinging for the fences all the time. You see these guys like, you could tell they're sight fishing because they're already standing on their trolling motor, right? And they'll cast, set as hard as they can, reel up, cast, set as, they look like they're snagging. Don't be that guy. If you use an exposed hook, pitch in there, you think they've got it, you just lean back just a little bit, just, just kind of tighten up on them. Just enough, that guard will compress and if that hook starts to bite, smash them. If it doesn't, you're not that guy, right? I love exposed hooks when I'm sight fishing or when I'm fishing in the spring around spawning fish. I think I hook a lot more fish. The next profile, let's talk about a drop shot. A drop shot is probably my number one bait actually. Um, I love to drop shot when I'm actively sight fishing. You guys know I love to power fish. I like big line. I like big gear. I like chasing big fish, fast moving baits. But when I'm actually going out to sight fish, a drop shot is probably my number one bait. The reason why is that I can go to a little heavier weight, go to like a three eighths ounce weight, I suspend that worm up just a little bit. Normally, you know, I'll put a drop shot anywhere from eight to 10 inches up. When I'm specifically sight fishing, I'll set it somewhere between like two and six inches up. Okay, so it's right there, it's in their face. Uh, but by going to that heavier weight, it'll wanna stick. And then I can work my bait much more effectively and keep it in the strike zone. Now, specific baits, Two main baits here for you, and then I've got a trick that I really want to talk about. First one is going to be a smallie smasher. This is a bait that we've talked about a lot. The big bite bait smallie smasher. Uh, the amount of sight fish that I've caught on that bait, like I don't even know how many. I destroy them with it. What I like about the smallie smasher is that, and both of these baits actually, the smallie smasher has this paddle tail on it. And I'm not using it like a swim bait, not that style of paddle tail. Let me pull one out. See how it's got that big flat paddle on it? That really makes it flow in the water. So I'm using a heavier weight that will stick to the bottom and then I can pop that bait. And I actually use very aggressive movements. I want that bait moving when I'm sight fishing with it. I'll let it fall and then pop it back up. I use a very specific hook. The owner, Mosquito Light, the light wire. I'll fish it on a lot of five, six, seven pound line. That's it. It's a very light wire hook. It would be easy to bend out if you were using stout gear. Don't do that. Use a very soft rod. Uh, and take your time fighting those fish. But that really light wire hook, that owner mosquito light, allows that bait to almost suspend. So I work it really good and that bait will get this awesome kick to it. And then I stall it and it's got a very slow fall because the hook doesn't weigh a ton. The thicker the wire of the hook, the faster that bait's gonna return to bottom. And I want it to hover there. So very specific hook for the job, but an amazing bait, that Big Bite Smallie Smasher. It comes in two sizes. Um, I would focus on the smaller size most of the time, unless you're targeting a uh, bigger largemouth, then I use the big one. The other bait is a, a Missile Baits, the Bomb Shot. Very similar profile. I mean, I could, I could say basically the exact same verbiage for this one. Again, it's got thin, bo thin body and then it's got that, that paddle tail on there. 
We recently reviewed this bait and I, I'm sure you guys saw that video, hopefully. Uh, there was some underwater video associated with that where it was, the bait just blew my mind. I have to include it in this video after what I watched. Normally, I would only talk about that Smalley Smasher, uh, but this missile bomb shot, same exact deal. Incredible movement in the water. The stall out is remarkable. Again, you're gonna use that same hook. I'm gonna call these like a one-two punch. Try both if that's what you're going for. The way that those fish can be sitting there looking at that thing and you, you work it and then you stall it out and it's just hovering in front of them and they just, they just vacuum that thing up. It's amazing. Now the trick, if I'm targeting big largemouth, this is something I have done a lot with clients over the years. I don't have any underwater footage of this technique, but I wanted to include it for you. This is just one of my personal tricks. I would with clients, again, if we were sight fishing, I would use drop shot a lot. It's very effective. But a lot of times with a client, I didn't know, hey, is this guy gonna be able to baby a fish? Are we gonna end up losing this bass? So a trick I developed, and this, I mean, it's not just for clients. This is something I do too. If I see a bed and I'm like, oh, that's a giant. And that's a fish I want to fish for. Uh, the drop shot is a great way to get them, right? I'm gonna try and get them on, typically I'm either gonna try and get a big one on a jig first, because I know if I stick them, I've got them. Get them on that big hook, get them on big line and just horse those fish to the boat. If they're not willing to eat a jig, I'll try uh, the Texas rig and then I'll try a bluegill swim bait. Again, I wanna hook them on a big profile with a big hook where I've got great odds of landing that fish. But if it's not happening, I go right here. So I'm gonna go to a bigger worm. This is that Robo Magic Worm. Uh, this or like a Robo Worm six inch fat, but a six inch straight tail, full profiled worm, okay? So instead of a little worm, I go to a bigger worm. And again, the fat body is key. It's gotta be a thicker worm. What I do is instead of using my normal little drop shot hook, I use a Gamakatsu Superline Wide Gap 2 watt specifically a two aught. This right here is a super strong hook. If I see an eight pounder and I hook it on a little mosquito light on five pound line around some stumps, I may or may not get my fish, right? I'm in for a battle at that point. If I can get that fish to commit to this, see when I put it on this worm, Again, the fat worm is key because it's gotta have enough body to hold this great big hook. But I go for a text pose like that. I can still drop shot it. It's not a perfect profile. I'm not pretending that it is. That's a lot of hook in your drop shot. But again, if I know it's a giant, if I can get her to eat that profile, I've got her on a heavy duty, large hook. That two watt is that perfect, that perfect balance where I can still get the giant to eat it. I can still get the bait to look good enough that they'll eat it. And then once I set, I've got them. And I upsize my line. I'll use like eight to 10, even 12 pound line with that setup and I hammer them and now I've got a real fighting chance of getting that giant out of cover and into the boat. I couldn't tell you the number of client caught fish that I've had over the years, over seven pounds on that exact setup using a six inch fat worm on that Gamakatsu 2 watt. It's just a deadly, deadly trick that has worked for me for a long time. And then the last profile is going to be a Ned Rig. Again, I like super natural presentations, okay? 
basically the, the three tricks that I want you to take away from this are one, sticking with baits that are really natural profiles and colors. Two, baits that are stubbier and it's easier for them to eat the whole bait. And then three, fishing exposed hooks anytime you can because you just barely lean on them and you hook those fish. You're not doing those crazy hook sets, beating those fish up, making yourself look silly. Uh, it's just better all around. So again, natural profiles. One of the baits that I really like is that Robo Worm Ned Worm. I mean, look at that hologram shad, such a natural tone, right? Such a fish catcher. It's an amazing bait and it just works remarkably well. And I mean, Robo's got a bunch of really good colors in that Ned Worm. That's just one of my favorites. But the last trick that I have for you uh, is a way to switch it up. We talk about BFS or bait finesse a lot. I really like taking, so that's a traditional Ned Rig, right? Exposed hook, leaning back on them. It's awesome and it works. But something I enjoy doing is grabbing a bait finesse rod with six or seven pound line on it and then taking a creature style Ned bait. So either a craws or a bugs and putting it on a micro little Texas rig. I use a 1 16th ounce tungsten weight. And again, in the video description, I'll link that because most of you don't even know a 1 16th exists. Use a 1 16th ounce tungsten weight and then this hook, that owner J light in a size one. Tiny little profile. I mean, again, six pound line, no problem all day long. I can take my creature bait and it's just a micro little Texas rig. Again, sometimes you upsize to get them to bite. Sometimes you downsize to get them to bite. But I can take that setup as a micro Texas rig, super light line. I don't care if the fish is back in cover. I can throw that to them because it's weedless. Uh, I can sit farther back. I can throw this little tiny profile, set up weedless, and it just works. I have had so much fun the last two years micro Texas rigging on my BFS setups. And it's, I mean, all I can say is that it's fun. If you want to go out and have a fun day on the water this month, next month, depending on exactly when the waves of spawners are in your area, when those fish start pushing shallow, whether you're sight fishing or not, again, that's important to understand. This information isn't just for the guy standing on his trolling motor sight fishing. This applies to the guy who says, I refuse to do that. I just want to go fishing. And that guy is up fishing the edges of cover, right? Throwing a shaky head, traditionally throwing a shaky head, throwing a jig, throwing top water. Set yourself up a little tiny bait finesse setup. Six pound line, seven pound line, little Texas rig. Throw that in all the places that you would normally throw a jig or a Texas rig, a full size Texas rig. And when you hook these fish, you will have the time of your life. It's a blast. Again, the spawn is a controversial time for some people, but we want people to know how to do it right. We want you to know how to do it ethically. So again, Tim has got an in-depth video coming on the subject of sight fishing. But today I wanted to get you guys underwater, look at some of my favorite baits for this style of fishing and give you a couple of those little tips that I personally use that I think make a big difference for me. Again, I'll link all the baits in the video description. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.